What's going on guys, it's Louis here from ConquerWealth.net and today we're going to talk a little bit about addiction and what kind of role that has in us dieting and not being able to lose weight. Now, because it's widely accepted, you know, eating badly is just a part of kind of modern day life, I have a binge here, have a binge there, had a bad Christmas, had a load of dessert, it's not often thought of that we can actually be addicted to our food completely addictive, worse than we could be with alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, all the common addictions. Now, it's my belief that sugar is much more addictive than any of those things. And it's probably the biggest killer out there. It's a silent killer, often what happens somewhere down the line. It's not the immediate kind of sugar that kills us then we die will get lots of health diseases caused by sugar, such as cancer, heart disease, etc, etc. Now, there was a study done years ago on mice, and what they were actually doing, they put a bunch of mice in kind of one pen, and another bunch of mice in another pen, and they had an electric rod coming from each side, and on the electric rod was some food. Fine, so the mice would go over, eat from the food, understand that there's something to eat there and just go back to wherever they went in the pen. Then what they've done is they laced one side with cocaine. So they actually laced the electric wire with cocaine and on the other side they laced it with sugar. And what actually happened was every time the mice then went over to eat, they would get an electric shock. Now, it was a powerful enough electric shock that if they kept going over they would die the mice would die, or they'd be severely injured. Now, what happened with the side of the cocaine, the mice were going over to eat, and they were getting this shot, bang, 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 and they think, oh no, that's not for me, I'm not gonna do that again. So they would stop. They went over to the other side where the sugar was, and they were eating, and they were eating again, and they were eating again, until a bunch of the mice actually died. What does that tell you? That tells you that the mice were so addicted to the sugar that they would go to the point of death just to get their hands on it, just to eat it. Whereas the other side, where the cocaine was, they can, you know, they could take it or leave it. And what's actually happening is when you eat sugar, you're activating the same reward pathway that you would for any other addiction you get a signalling of dopamine, it's a reward chemical in our brain which tells us, oh that, that's really nice, I like that, and it's a pretty big signal. So you'll get a dopamine release when you go to the cinema, when you go for a walk, when you spend some time with your girlfriend, when you go to the gym, when you go for a long run, when you play sports, all of these things are good healthy dopamine releases. And what you might happen is you might get a dopamine release of say like 50. But what's happening when you get, when you eat sugar, is, or any other addiction for that matter, you get a dopamine release of like 250, 300. So when you go back to, let's, let's take sugar, because that's, because that's what we're talking about. We eat a bunch of sugary food like, you know, dessert, banoffee pie, chocolate, crisps, whatever it might be and we feel great, oh, oh, it tastes so nice, that's beautiful. Then when we come back and try to diet and you have chicken and veg, oh, it's boring, I don't want that food, it's just so boring and bland. How many times have we heard that from people? That you can't stick to a diet because you feel like it's boring. Well, this is one massive reason why. Who was the last person you heard or that you knew was addicted to chicken or addicted to vegetables? Nobody. Doesn't happen. We get addicted to sugary foods or foods with chemicals in. Pringles, once you pop you can't stop. Jaffa cakes, all those type of sugary addictive foods. And, and the problem is the government or the, the industry rather, the food industry know this. So the marketing is super clever. What will happen is you go into a petrol station, where's the chocolate? It's right at the counter where you're about to pay. You're about to pay, you're standing in line, you're looking around, oh God, I see that chocolate down there. Your brain's going, go on, 
Go on, just, just one more, just, just grab it. And that's what happens. It's your dopamine pathways firing up. You get that rush of dopamine, so bang, I'm gonna take a chocolate. Before you know it, your diet's gone. Two or three days after trying, you've got the cravings again. Have you ever tried to diet strictly? You get headaches, you get the shakes, you feel restless, you can feel a bit depressed. Some people get the sweat. Some people just generally don't feel great. Well, well that's why it's like a cleanse of, of sugar coming out of your system. So the question would be, what do I do about this? I, I am addicted to sugar. I've got a high carb, high refined carbohydrate diet of breads, of lots of rice, of lots of chocolate, muffins, cakes. How do I break that chain? Now, a few great things you can start with, uh, starting with some intermittent fasting. So that would mean only eating between a certain period of the day, like 12 and 8, 1 and 6, for example. And that will allow your body time to cleanse of that process and cleanse a lot of that out of your system. Another great way to do it is juice fast. So we can just juice vegetables for 2, 3, 4 days and just, again, give your body a whole toxic cleanse completely. Um, a juice I like to do a lot of is beetroot, fennel, carrot, um, and celery. That's quite a nice mix. We obviously can't do these things forever. Intermittent fasting is something I do all the time, but juicing you can only do for two or three days. I've actually just finished the post-Christmas juice fast myself. What do you do after that? So a few diets that I love, not diets, lifestyles I like to say. Paleo, amazing. Um, ketogenic diet, if, you're, if you can cope with that and you can get keto adapted, that's great. Another thing, probably the most efficient and the closest one I follow is a nutrient dense diet and that would be packing as many nutrients, micronutrients that is, as possible in your diet. So lots of vegetables, a real mix of vegetables, organic meats, um, wild caught fishes, and some low GI fruits as well. I'm a big fan of the berries, so blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, green apples as well will fall into that category. So guys, they're all things that you can do. Have a think about it. When you, the next time you go into a shop or go into a supermarket, what kind of reaction does your body, does your brain give you when you see a chocolate? Do you get that, that real craving? And if you just try to stop cold turkey, what happens? If you start getting some of the symptoms and you can't go two or three days without, you know, not eating something sugary, then yeah, you probably are addicted. Like, it, like, similar to what would happen if you tried to stop your coffee, if you're a coffee drinker. So have a think about it, guys. Maybe implement some of the strategies that I said. Um, on my website, www.conquerwealth.net, there is a nutrition plan on there, the Lean Forever Nutrition Plan, which uh, basically does incorporate a high nutrient-dense um, diet for weight loss, it'll make you feel a lot better, you'll feel more clear headed, you'll sleep better, you'll be able to you'll be able to lose weight easily. So you can check that out as well guys if you want to, no pressure. Um, hit the like button for me and give it a share. Leave your comments below, I will answer them if you've got any questions about dieting and um, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers guys.